All right, we got Warframe. Why do new players really quit? From Cool Kid Three Six Nine. <laughs> That's a good name. Hey everyone, Cool Kid here. I don't think it'll be a shock to anybody to hear that Digital Extremes is trying to bring new players into Warframe. They've reduced several progression-connected grinds like Fortuna. Really? So me, I would consider myself like a new player, but I don't know. Like if you look at my like account level, I think I'm like account level like 18. It's like that doesn't really scream new player, but I think how I played the game was like wrong because I didn't really understand the systems. <laughs> I played the game on and off for many months. And I was just like, oh, there's so many quests. I got to do the quests. Uh, there's so many. Oh, you don't really have to worry about power. It'll come naturally. Uh, just worry about your account level. But oh, you don't have to get it that high. In order to unlock everything. <sighs> like trying to learn this game as a new player. Is just really tough. And I had no idea that some of this stuff. Uh, was. Has been literally nerfed. Or. Or buffed. <laughs> depending on how you think about it. Uh, what is this? Void rig acquisition improvements. Rank two. Uh, yeah. Like I think I got to this part. The whole void rig thing. What is this? Replace 10k credit rewards in 40. Including. Yeah. Like all of this stuff. It's kind of crazy to think that some of this stuff actually has been nerfed in terms of like acquisition. And the max streamlined the process of playing through quests by removing several time gates. There were time gates for quests. We've tackled new player improvements from a variety of angles and we'll go, Jesus Christ, man. I understand like Warframe's like 10 years old. And this is like the most morally righteous or morally justified pay to win game ever. And the main thing that carries it is the core game loop of the Warframes. I mean, I get that. But there used to be time gates Jesus and even made Duveri an alternate start to the game when it was first released oh I didn't even know that I played the game like Warframe Path and Duveri Paradox wasn't even out yet so then when I started playing on and off Duveri Paradox came out and I was like oh what's this well it's kind of like Soul Frame or it's kind of like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a Soulsborn uh, spin, but in Warframe. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And I got through it and I was like, oh, it's actually pretty well done. Though that's no longer the case. It's also probably not very shocking to hear that I've been playing Warframe for a very long time. Oh, I don't got that hours. Hell, I don't even, I, bro, I don't even know if I got... Well, I probably have triple digits. I was going to say, I don't even know if I have like a thousand hours. <laughs> Jesus. Damn. I don't even think I've been playing PC games that long. <laughs> Jesus. Starting on Xbox in late 2014 and moving to PC in 2016. As you might guess, I've introduced many friends to this game over the years in an attempt to, well, play the co-op game cooperatively. You want to know yeah. how many people stuck it out? Zero. One. Oh, one. The one. There's always one. My bad. One singular person, that being my boyfriend Nitro, has stuck with Warframe long enough to make it through the story and unlock the steel path. Behind him, I have two people I've introduced to the game make it past the second dream, and that's it. I've tried to introduce probably a dozen people, if not more, to this game over the years, and I have one who's finished the story, and two who made it past the point where it even- Honestly, I don't know jack shit about the story. I got like one friend that I, I've randomly discovered that he also plays Warframe and it's funny because he will randomly just like correct me on story things and be like, Oh bro, uh, you just powered through the story. Like, how could you do that? I'm like, yeah, I'm playing Warframe for the gameplay, not the story. <laughs> like the story is probably really good, but I don't know jack shit.
about the, the Warframe story. <laughs> I just don't. It's Space Ninjas. <laughs> starts. It's hard to introduce people to games like Warframe because they're full of confusing systems that were mm -hmm. often added years apart. Oh, Beyond yeah. Beyond that, they also have key pain points that drive players away before their investment in the game is high enough to push through them. Yep. Warframe needs new players. It's how games like it survive. But at this point, pretty much everybody seems to have tried the game. 24 friends have played previously. <laughs> it's too much. The grind is too much, even though that's what Warframe is. I get it, but like the power fantasy you get from grinding once you fully complete a build, it's crazy. Like, I don't like, I think Warframe, the Warframe grind to make like a final build to like level cap shit is, it takes way more time than like PoE. I mean, shit, PoE is like seasonal content uh, pretty much, but there are just so many systems. There's so many reputations. There's so many things in the game. So why is it still seen as so niche when it's got so much high quality content that can be accessed for free? I think it's safe to say it's a combination of factors. And while several have been addressed over- While you can access everything, it's not really free. Cause you pay in time. <laughs> over the years, there are a few big ones that really need to be looked at. When it comes to things that have been addressed, DE has done a lot of very good things. The quest director telling you where to go and what to do, mm. making stats more clear in the arsenal, adding descriptions for buffs, making standing caps more bottom heavy for lower MR players. Standing caps lower for bottom level players. Oh, okay. All great changes for those who are starting out. Despite this, the game can't seem to keep noobs. The thing I've noticed with a lot of reputations or standings uh, you know, there's like, uh, what is it? There's like a reputation with this group of people in the game with a lot of other games that have like a similar system. You go do some things for this group and then you gain reputation and there's like five ranks in most uh, of all the, the standings in this game. But the main thing that draws people to Warframe is like the core game of war of, of the Warframes. This is like the main thing, even though there's a bunch of other shit in the game. A lot of just the power that comes from, uh, what do you call it? From like the, the standings, you don't really gain a lot of it until you reach like that third or four, like either the third tier or like the fifth tier tier in like the standing reputation gain thing. So they want you to keep grinding and, and doing all the stuff until you get to that last tier. That's where all the good stuff is. But to a new player, it's going to be like a 50-50 whether or not they want to do it and stick around for that long. Around, and I want to explore why. Early on, Warframe can be very overwhelming without a friend to teach it to you, but I don't think that alone is what kills it for most people. Warframe is overwhelming but learnable. Yes, it is but it's very overwhelming, but it is learnable. Like I said, I've tried to introduce several friends to this game over the years, and despite me being able to clarify things for them, most of them still dropped it, even though they often said they were having fun. So what's the hang-up? What kills the game for so many people so early on? So early on? It's too overwhelming. They see some montage videos of a uh, random YouTube bro uh, doing like a showcase of a weapon or a Warframe or an ability of him just like marking an entire screen of enemies. And then uh, Mr. Day One Warframe, like Day One John Warframe comes in. He's like, oh, I, I'm going to pick one of my like little three starter frames of, uh, uh, was it like Excalibur, Volt, or uh, what is it? Who's the other one? Mag. And then they get into the game. And they compare the gameplay that they're doing right now to the gameplay that they saw on Joe Schmo YouTube. And it's like, well, this isn't the same. And then maybe they grind for like a couple days, a couple weeks, maybe a month if they stick around that long. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, shit, I invested a month into the game. Uh, and it's still like nowhere near close to what I saw on, on that YouTube video. 
and then they're just like, well, this is fucking stupid. I'm not paying any more money. I'm out. That's literally how it goes because that's what I thought. <laughs> Like I said, it's a complicated topic, but there are two major factors that I don't see anybody talk about, despite being a huge quitting point for many people. So, getting into the actual topic of the video, why do new players really quit Warframe? To put it plainly, it's due to two major pain points, crafting times and slot limitations. Oh yeah, these are huge too. A hundred percent. The, like, the timer, like I understand why the timer is there and it's necessary. I mean, I don't even think it's necessary. Like, you can rush the timer and, like, pay platinum to, uh, like, rush the crafting time, but, like, uh, like, why? And then slot limitations? This is so stupid. You have weapon slots. You have melee weapon slots. You have Warframe slots. What are you doing? Like, and even if you go into the, uh, what do you call it? Into the game and you like start crafting all these weapons and then you start crafting a bunch of them and then you want to like just have it in your inventory it's like oh you got you don't have enough slots do you want to buy one it's only 12 plat which i don't even know the conversion rate of like plat to like you know like american dollars what is it like a dollar or something i don't exactly know like a dollar 20 or something it's like oh it's just a dollar it's nothing you know that's your your shoe in point it's like oh once the new player has spent a dollar, that's like the slippery slope to them spending more money. So it's kind of needed. I would love to see the, the financial breakdown of uh, like Warframe and see what new players spend their money on and see what, I mean, not, I would, I would say like veteran players, but veter I would guess that like people that have like super invested in the game, they probably don't spend like money anymore because they have just literally have most things in the game. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The crafting times in this game are absolutely ridiculous. Having to wait yeah. anywhere from 12 to 20. To 12, 24 hours, 12 hours, uh, 12 hours, 24, 12, 12. Like, what are we doing? I want to play the game now. Huh? I, I saw a video where the dude was using the Exceltra and that looks like a cool gun. I, I can hit the build button. I collected all the things. I got the blueprints, but what's this number? Oh, I got to make it. I can't play it until either tomorrow or maybe the next day. What the hell is that? Huh? 24 hours for every new weapon and a minimum of three and a half days for a new Warframe is absolutely absurd. Yeah. Many, many people that either my friends or myself know have quit upon seeing the egregious crafting times. And I hate to say I can't blame them. You spend all this time gathering materials. Yeah, this is. I don't know if there is a game that is more egregious than that. There, there may be. But God damn, dude. Making progress through the star chart, getting credits, all working towards a goal of getting a shiny new weapon or Warframe only to be hit with a 12 hour crafting time minimum. I know when I first started out back in middle school, I was absolutely floored seeing that my Rhino I had spent so much time trying to get would take 12 whole hours for the components to build. Mm -hmm. When that jumps to three whole days, I was hugely discouraged and even quit playing the game entirely for those days he was stuck in the oven. I'm glad I didn't just up and quit, but I know that many, many people who see this kind of thing oh, often yeah. do. This feels like a damn mobile game, and it sucks so much fun out of the experience to be stonewalled out of that thing that you were excited to get for no reason other than to pressure you into paying up. What are you supposed to do while you're waiting? Uh, you're supposed to play the game while you're waiting. Go collect resources. Go co get credits. Go collect endo. Uh, go try to collect mods. Go farm mods. Go farm rep. Or standing. Uh, yeah. That's what the, the developers think, well, they, what they want you to do. That's what they want you to do. That's what I often ask myself early on. And when you're playing a new and frankly very addictive game like Warframe, being told that you have to wait so long before you can claim the fruits of your labor kills a lot of that desire to keep playing. A lot of the power gain is derived from getting a specific mod and also increasing the level of that mod. 
but I think new players don't really understand like how powerful or how much power comes from having like a certain mod or an augmented move or something like that. They're like conventional, like intuitive thinking is like, okay, my Warframe's at level 30, it's maxed. And then once you get like Warframe brain, it's like, oh, let me just form all these slots or whatever. It's like, okay, then I can shove like more higher mods in there. But then the game doesn't really tell you like where to get certain mods. You have to go to like a third party thing or uh, like watch a YouTube video and see like what somebody else built to, to see like where all your power for your Warframe is supposed to come from. And it, I don't know, maybe it's like that for like a lot of other uh, game genre or maybe not other game genres, but like one other game genre that kind of does this is uh, action RPGs. Uh, you know, like Diablo, PoE, uh, things like this. It's not very intuitive where the power is supposed to come from, but you kind of know it's like it's somewhere in the game, but you don't know where exactly. People have limited time, be it because of work or school or what have you, and having to wait for crafting times on things they already spent that limited time working towards sucks. When I saw that 3 day Rhino build time, all I could think was that I wouldn't be able to play him until I was already back in the school week. Yeah. If I remember right, I started it on a Friday, so I would go the whole weekend without being able to try him out, which meant I basically had nothing exciting to do in the game with all that free time. I had all this spare time I could use to play the game, but nothing new to play with because the devs artificially locked me out of the thing mm -hmm. I already spent several hours working for. Yeah, there is nothing particularly valuable about a three-day timer at all that is an arbitrary uh, like just time that they just stuck on that to make a warframe okay so this is already really bad for new players and from both my own experience and the experience of several of my friends who play this game many noobs quit right here seeing a 12-hour crafting time is a quit moment seeing a three oh, yeah. day crafting time is a massive quit moment but there's an extra so what what did the devs do to try to alleviate this you know they got their little weekly dev blog thing that they they keep up with and i imagine you know it, it, shit's been going on for 10 years i imagine that whenever they get that question they probably have got to be like nauseated whenever they get that question it's like because they've seen it for like 10 years that is even if the player knew to go watch like the little dev blog and to see that oh all these other people are playing the game and all these other people are waiting for 12 hours. So that must be the norm. So I should do that too. You kind of have to be like indoctrinated into like Warframe. Extra piece of this puzzle that makes it even worse. So picture this, you're a new player, currently only using your starter, we'll say mag, and another early game frame like Rhino. You've been curious to see what the other starters are like, so you find out Let Krill drops Excalibur, and, despite struggling a bit, you grind out a set of him. You then progress through the star chart further to grind up resources, and after several hours of gameplay, you can finally craft him. You wait 12 hours, then 3 days. It's annoying, and frankly boring, but your Rhino grind prepared you for this. Finally, after oh, half yeah. a week of real time, you can finally play your new character. You go to claim him from the Foundry, and you're out of slots. Yep. The game has now put you in a position where- Oh, well, how do I farm for a new slot? I, I still don't even know, besides play, paying platinum. I have no idea. Where you have three options. Pay up and purchase a slot for your new Warframe, delete one of the two other frames that you have and were already enjoying, or don't claim your new item at all. This means that, if you aren't going to pay, you're sacrificing something you know you like for a chance that you might enjoy Excalibur. And if mm -hmm. you do pay, you're dropping money on an experience that feels like it just gave you the middle finger. Add yeah. on to that that you've been hit with another thing. Yeah, I remember that feeling like many years ago when I got the, this little thing. And then I asked my buddy, oh, how do I give, get slots? He's like, there is no way you have to pay. Or not there's no way. Because I think you get some like in the night wave maybe and then there's like some other ways but there's no way to like farm for slots blocking you from playing with the gear you spent so much time both grinding and now crafting to get and it's often just too much I mean if there is I just simply don't know 
This is the straw that breaks the camel's back for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So much so that in the last few years, everyone I've introduced to the game, I buy slots for so they don't experience it. Mm -hmm. To go into some detail, on I mean, shit, and like, to be able to have a gamer's impression in the first, pla first place, or not, not their impression, their uh, attention in the first place, is is huge, you know? Your foot is in the, the door. You're in their house. They're playing the game. You got them. You just have to not fuck up your first impression. But then you have to create a, a frame or a weapon. Or maybe they have created a couple. And then, oh, slot. I don't got enough. Like, what? <laughs> you, that's the, that's. That's it right there, the slots. On a new account, you start with two, count them, two Warframe slots. On oh, how many Warframes are in the game? Wasn't it like 56 or something? Or maybe there's like a little bit more. And then you have like primes, the prime version of each Warframe. So you're going to give me, you're going to give me three or two, like two or three. What are you guys doing? Would the game like break that much if you just allowed like all the slots to be open? Like really like, and I understand why they can't. Okay. Because that completely devalues and it, it devalues everything that previous players have done in the game. And it puts everything that they've done to like waste. It's like, oh, well, what the heck? If I had infinite slots, I wouldn't have deleted this frame or, or that weapon or this. Or, I mean, I get it. But at the end of the day, Warframe, it, it, it is a game company and it is a business. And <laughs> it needs to make money. How do you make money? Uh, you got to get new players. I, like, I would love to see how many players are being retained or gained whatever the, the churn rate is. Like, how long does a new player stick around for? I would imagine it would be like about a month and then they just quit. And then maybe like a couple months later, maybe they might come back for like a patch update or something. Maybe they'll play for like a month again. But Warframe isn't seasonal content. Warframe is just everything. On top of that, you only get eight weapon slots. This isn't even enough to buy every weapon you can get for credits, which many new players should do in order to experiment and expand their playstyle. Huh. What baffles me about this is that Warframe prides itself on its expansive arsenal. So much expansive arsenal. If you want to shell out the platinum for it. That it's all over the game's marketing. Real funny, by the way, guys, I've put more money into this game than most people spend on their goddamn Steam libraries. This game has like 700 I items, 57 unique Warframes, hundreds of weapons in each slot, and we're restricting them out of the gate to less than they can grind in the first- You have all these frames and all these weapons, and also, all of the mods that go with on top of the frames and all the mods that go with all the weapons. There's a lot of creativity in this game, but so few people get to actually experience it. If you want to be creative in the game, you have to invest an ungodly amount of time. It's ridiculous. First two hours. So why are we walling players out of new toys to play with so insanely early? Now, to be fair, DE has added a tooltip in the Foundry to show how many slots you have left, which is a good thing, but that doesn't solve the fact that they give the player way too few of them up front. When a new player is just starting out, they can't even own more than the three starter Warframes out of the gate. They either have to spend their limited starter platinum, which many new players won't know to do. Mm -hmm. They have to spend their own money or they have to trade. Though new players won't have any valuable items to trade for platinum moves have no desirable. Yep. Sell for platinum this early in the game. Even worse, the game's main form of account progression relies on leveling new items, that system being mastery rank. What you mm -hmm. should be doing is not deleting anything until you max its level out, but new players won't know to do this. Yep. Because of that, if they get a new item that they don't have a good first impression with, they'll immediately delete it to make space for new items. This both trashes potential mastery rank and also makes them feel like all of the time they spent grinding out resources and waiting for that item to craft went yep. to waste. The fundamental issue with all of these things is time investment. 
New players just started this game. If they had fun for a day or two and then hit this overwhelming pressure to pay, both to speed up crafts or to buy slots, it's gonna feel like they're being sharked. On top of that, they haven't invested that much time into the game, so they're very likely to just quit. Yeah. That's what I would, like, for a new player looking at, like, Warframe, like, ten years later, I would say don't, do not go into Warframe. 100% no. Like, you have to invest too much time. There are other games that can offer similar experiences that allow you just, like, so much more creative. Well, not so much more creative. Just an easier accessibility to the creativity part of the game that you just don't need to invest as much time. All right? Like, this is my favorite example, and it's like a little whatever game. Uh, Crab Champions. Go play Crab Champions. Movement, immaculate. It's a roguelike. A hundred percent. You have so much that you can do in Crab Champions. All of the little things that you can, uh, like, put onto your gun. Uh, make all the guns just do, like, millions of elemental damage, crit builds... You could make the projectiles gigantic and slow moving or gigantic and fast moving or whatever. You can make everything bounce. You can make shit turn into tornadoes and it, it's awesome. But the main thing is that you don't have to invest a lot of time into it. it, it like the main reason you would pick Warframe over Crab Champions is simply for the aesthetic of playing with Space Ninjas. That's it. Gameplay wise, they're about the same. Sorry. <laughs> this game has such a wealth of story and gameplay and unique characters and weapons, and yet noobs leave because so much of it is blocked off to them unless they pay up or constantly trash things they have and already like. Why keep playing when I could just move on to some other free-to-play game? Mm -hmm. There are so many options in today's gaming landscape that the answer is simple. Just don't keep playing. Those like me, and presumably you, who stuck it out found a fantastic <laughs> game and narrative but most people will not stick it out because yeah. they have no investment in the game itself. The first thing new players are asked to give Warframe isn't any emotional or social investment, but their money and time, which is a huge motivator to quit. So how do we fix these issues? Well, what I want to do is remove crafting times and inventory limits and- Oh. So how would that affect the, the veterans of the player base? What, what would happen then? They would just, do you think any of the veterans would quit? The, the guys that are like all maxed out on all the resources and have everything, would they just be like, oh shit, all my time is all for naught. Entirely, but I know those are both not realistic. Would it be the best route for the game? Yes. Would it also remove a major source of monetization DE no doubtedly relies on? Also yes, which is why I don't think it'll ever happen. Despite that though... Bro, you could literally say any, removing anything that you could do for Platinum would hurt DE's money, okay? Literally anything that requires Plat removes money from DE, okay? So that's not a good argument. While it is true, it is true, and you're not wrong, there are so many things. There are so many streams uh, that you can pay Platinum for that anything that alters any stream where the player can play Platinum 4 alters DE's bottom line. So, I think we can make some simple improvements to help player retention. So, regarding crafting times, lower them across the board massively. I mean like a tenth of the time at least. My I agree. My solution would be either 1 12th of the time if I'm being generous, or 1 24th of the time if I actually get my way. No more multi-day crafts, no more yeah. day-long crafts, no more even 12-hour crafts. Yeah. Get this stuff out of the game, please. If I'm a busy person who gets home on a work night and spends my limited time grinding out a new gun, I should not have to wait till I get home from work the next day to use it. If we are going to keep crafting times, which I don't doubt we will because rush building is a source of profit, we should... Does Warframe, uh, the, my main question, and this is going to be out of left field, does Warframe have cheats? Or what's the anti-cheat system look like in Warframe? 
even though it is mostly a PvE game, people, whenever you say the word cheats in like an FPS or like a third, like a shooter, people think PvP games, but all this time while I've been playing Warframe, I've been shooting things and meleeing things and doing all sorts of shit. There has to be cheats for this game to get around all of that. So what does the anti-cheat system look like for this game? Because I am just completely in the dark for this. We should at least let people use new stuff in the same play session, even if we're telling them they have to wait. For impatient people, I don't doubt they'll still want to rush build, especially if the prices are lowered. But this makes the system much less egregious for everyone else. Thing is, this change is ultimately meaningless without an increase in the amount of starting slots. Honestly, I think a big issue with slots in general is that earning them for free is rare despite how many you need, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I have several hypothetical solutions. I mean, again, it's still not free because you have to pay with time and attention because even if they were to give out weapon slots or frame slots during like their little dev blog, that is still you having to log in and pay attention to their little Twitch or YouTube or whatever they do it on. So you're still paying with time and attention solutions to the slot problem, but I'll give the simplest and most realistic one up front. Triple or even quadruple the number of starting slots. This won't be nearly enough to acquire everything in the game, but it will push the pressure to pay much further down the road so that players can actually build investment in the game and try out new things with relative freedom. If the game is going to That is actually a really good idea. I think this is this is great. I'll push the whole pressure to pay money later. Let players build up some uh, emotional investment into the game. And just do it later. Don't do it so early. Gonna ask me to buy a slot, I'm much more likely to do so after I've sunk in 20 hours instead of, say, two and a half. This would give us six to eight Warframe slots to start and 24 to 32 weapon slots. That may sound like a lot, but with how much stuff is in this game, it really yeah. isn't in the grand scheme of things. It's really not. Even so, it still lets new players explore three to four times more content before being asked to pay. For reference, eight Warframe slots is about one-seventh of the unique playable characters in this game, and 32 weapon slots is less than a tenth of the game's total arsenal. On top of being able to just use more stuff early on, this also means that new players will have progressed much further into the game when this pressure to pay comes up, which then means that trading for Platinum to buy those slots will be a much more realistic option for them. Whether or not we expand other slot types is kind of up in the air, as there are often far fewer items to fill said slots, but I think that mm -hmm. Weapon and Warframe are the two most pressing to address. So that's the simplest solution, but I don't think it really fixes slots as a system. I understand there are Slots as a system is stupid. I don't care if all the, the veteran players are wholly invested in the game. Slots as a system is stupid. <laughs> Just remove them. <laughs> what a joke of a system. It really is, dude. <laughs> They're important for monetization. And I also understand that letting people get infinite amounts of anything with no recourse could cause database issues but I still think they're way too hard to get without some money being put into the game. You don't have to have infinite slots. However many weapons and frames there are, just have that amount of slots and just be done with it. You don't need to have infinity slots. Nobody's asking for infinity slots. Just let me build a character. Let me keep the character and then just leave it. My suggestion to that end is to make them renewable in some way, or maybe offload their acquisition to progression milestones. Maybe we could buy them in the Nightwave shop for a hefty amount of currency, maybe slots could be rewarded from junctions or mastery rank ups, maybe they could be rare invasion rewards. There are a lot of ways this could be done, but I still think that fundamentally they should be obtainable without platinum more often and more easily. Yeah. Still, with how cheap they are, I think most new players will be much more willing to either grind out stuff to trade or hand over their hard-earned money if they've spent more time actually playing and enjoying the game. Even if we don't add new acquisition methods for slots, a big bump in early game slots will still help massively. This would obviously also have to retroactively apply to all existing accounts, and I think a lot of people would come back to the game to try stuff they'd missed if they suddenly had a decent amount of slots to actually claim and use that stuff especially so if the crafting times get reduced. 
Hmm. So if you've gotten this far in the video, I hope you haven't left a comment telling me that DE has addressed crafting times on a dev short. I did actually- DE knows. I will leave a link with the timestamp in the description if you <laughs> would like to see it for yourself. Yeah. actually see this, and I waited this long to bring it up because I know- I mean, this is, this is like standard dev speak. Uh, we know we're listening, uh, and we're monitoring the situation, and we will, uh, address it when we see fit, or, or something along those lines. That's literally every game developer, every game developer live service game. That's like a standard paragraph that is like a copy paste. You know, if I see any of those comments, they didn't actually watch the whole video. I know who you are. You better delete that shit. This is a threat. We got nothing concrete, but knowing it's on the devs radar made it feel like high time to strike while the iron's hot and get some feedback out there regarding the issue as a whole. So those are the two big things in my view. Crafting times and slot limitations kill motivation to play before the player is really invested. Beyond that though, I do think this game has some other smaller but still important issues in the new player experience, and I want to make those known while we're on the topic. For one, please add a tutorial that explains the mastery rank system, preferably around or after the first MR test. Explain that items need to be max rank for full mastery, and add a specific warning that tells players when they are about to delete an unmastered item. That would help. Confirm prompt where you have to type something in a text box. Would Are you sure you want to override the mods defined in mag config C? This action cannot be undone. Go a very long way here. Basically, please add some guardrails for new players so they don't hurt themselves in the long run. Yeah. And explain to them why those guardrails are even needed. While we're on the topic of mastery rank, can we please also remove the day lockouts between tests? I could. See oh yeah, this is also pretty stupid. But that's why there's a practice button. Like, bro, nobody wants to practice the dang thing before they do the thing. Like, this game is being treated as if it were, like, a job. And this is, like, the only game I've played where this game is being treated like this. No other game I've played has this, like, m this much shit. In it this many like and warframe has a good amount of guardrails already to say that it needs more guardrails it's like bro if I, the only reason why warframe gets the pass is because of the the core game loop that's it the movement the weapons the the creativity essentially the montages uh, of everything that's why it gets the pass See it if it was like an hour or two, but a whole day is just excessive, especially early on when you're going through ranks fairly quickly. I also think that the auto install button in the modding screen is a noob trap that needs to be either reworked or completely yeah. removed. I have seen almost every single person I've ever introduced to this game hit it, assume it did its job well, and then have a bunch of weak as shit mods that aren't doing anything for them. Yeah. This makes the game way harder than it needs to be, and doesn't adequately explain that your power comes from modding, not leveling up like in other games. Uh, to be honest, I did not know that Mending Shot and Rifle Ammo Mutate were free to slot at rank zero. Huh. Well, I didn't know that either. So, add a proper modding tutorial. Explain to players what certain key stats mean up front. I mean... I don't think really like most games that try to explain their stats. This is like another big thing. A lot of games that where there's like some power fantasy, uh, wrap behind it, which is a lot. Um, there's a lot of stats. There's a lot of shit that goes on. There's a lot of interactions between numbers and like every level you go down, it just, winds down uh up to being uh like do you do you know how the formula calculation works do you know how the damage calculation works do you know if this uh interaction is bugged out causing an unwanted inter interaction with that and there's like levels to it obviously but this is something that will probably appear appeal to like people that have probably played past a month Probably, I don't really know if people would, like, be up for, like, something like this. Like, if the, if the whole modding tutorial would be just, like, a gigantic, like, explanation dump. Like, do you, if you're playing a new game, do you want to, like, 
sit there and ex like have the game explain to you how the game works for like an hour or two, how every little starter system works, or do you just want to get in and play the game? I think most people want to just get in and play the game, but on the flip side, I do think a botting tutorial uh, would be pretty, pretty nice instead of me having to go to like some YouTube dude. It's like, oh, I look up his build. What's he doing? He's got all this uh, shit that I have no idea what it does. I just look for that mod. If I don't got that mod, uh, I'll just go figure out how to get it. And then, okay, that's pretty much the experience for me. Do a better job of illustrating that quality of mod is more important than quantity of mods. Maybe even give them certain starter mods and rank up materials to walk them through the process. I very much think that if mastery rank and modding were explained better, it would yeah. set players up for much greater success in the long run and prevent those feelings of your past self screwing you over. My last major suggestion is to prioritize weapons you can buy for credits outright in the market, and then mm -hmm. blueprints for weapons and warframes. I know many players who were discouraged by having to work so hard to craft everything when they didn't really need to, the game just doesn't tell them that stuff like the Strun and Lex can be bought from the get-go. I have also met many people who said they didn't know about weapon blueprints and thought you had to use platinum, which is a huge turnoff, so oh, yeah. making an effort to show that these things can be earned would be hugely helpful. The biggest hurdle a free-to-play game has to get over is beating the pay-to-win allegations, and when a new player opens the market and sees a premium currency as the only thing- Is that like the insult for Warframe? Even though you can get about everything in the game with just time investment, is that supposed to be like the, because I know like a lot of uh, pay to win games are, are like, they have like insults for each other and the main ones like pay pig and all that shit. I guess it's like super prideful to, to have like a really end game build and, and just be super powerful. So someone would just say like, oh, that's pay to win. And you could just be like, oh no, no, it's not. I just invested all the time. It's. I guess that, I guess that's a thing that I'm not aware of. I mean, I think I paid for like with platinum, a lot of these, like just base warframes and I'm probably stupid for doing that, but whatever. Uh, I mean, I had fun. Um, but on the flip side, I don't know if there's a lot of pride to be gained from doing a time sink into a game where the achievements are simply based off of just time sync and not skill. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to start a whole argument of like all oh, skill versus time investment and all this jazz and whatnot, because that's just whatever. It's a different topic, but I don't think that's a, a good way to go about it either. Uh, but I don't know. That's just my two cents. Uh, being prideful over having like a massive time sink uh, isn't something to be proud of either. Being tied to any item at a glance, that shit looks pay to win. Real quick, as one final note, please remove the crafting time for clan keys or just remove them entirely. Hmm. Locking new players out of their friend's clan for a whole day just sucks. Oh yeah, that's stupid. All right, that's it for today's video. Sorry for it being so rambly and undoubtedly kind of jumbled. This is a dense topic that I have a lot of thoughts on. Yeah. I think there are many things that could improve the new player experience, but if the changes and tutorials I suggested are implemented, I think it would go a very long way. I want to recommend this game to people. I want to see it thrive and bring in a new audience. Yeah. And I think that for... The, the game is good, but the game gets in its own way from letting massive amounts of people enjoy it. Uh, I think there was this like one study done that was like gamers today are less strategic uh, and creative than they were like five, 10 years ago or something like that. There's some study I read like a while ago. And the thing that the realization that I, that came to me uh, like somewhere in this, well, like about a month or two ago is that I don't think it's gamers. I mean, well, it's gamers being less strategic and creative is an illness because that what's the environment that they're in well the environment that they're in is a lot of games uh gatekeep their creativity and strategic uh you know shit uh in the game with you know putting a bunch of time into it 
pick any game you want that has a lot of creativity, uh, like World of Warcraft, uh, Warframe, PoE, Diablo. Take all those end game systems, literally make them all unlocked at the very beginning and let everybody have access to everything instead of being able to, uh, what do you call it? Instead of everybody having to put a time sink in and, uh, you know, having to build for something and just see what kind of creativity that you can get. It's not that people are less creative and strategic. It's just people don't want to put in the time and effort to get to that point. For all of DE's efforts so far, this would be the breakthrough that they need. So I want to ask you all now that you've heard my thoughts, what are yours? What parts of the new player experience do you think need changed? Did you have any friends that quit early because of the issues I outlined, or maybe even some other issues I hadn't considered? I'd love to know, and I hope that someone at DE stumbles across this video so they can take that feedback and turn it into something tangible. Unrealistic? Absolutely, but yeah. I know at the very least that they watch my videos to patch fun bugs. Beyond all that, like and sub and all that junk. Thank you so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my channel members for funding what you see here on YouTube. You were all immortalized on my eThought whiteboard. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time when I finally upload something good. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that was cool. Um, I definitely agree with a lot of the points uh, dudes made. Um, I don't really, like, currently, uh, Warframe, at least on Steam, is sitting at, like, what, like, 50, 60-ish K, somewhere in between. So, it's just stable as far as, like, new players go. Uh, with all the revenue streams that the game has in place, uh, I don't know what percentage uh, is where in terms of where people are spending platinum or real world money for platinum and then spending in the game. I don't know, but you know, only only digital extremes has that information. So I don't know. Uh, only they know and. It is what it is, man. I don't really think it'll change, but I mean, you pretty much said that. But it'd be nice if uh, they eased up on some shit, but I mean, it's whatever. But overall, cool video. I liked it. And it's nice to think that even like the veterans uh, think that some of this shit's like still egregious, even after 8,000 hours. So that's nice. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it for me. I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, later.